Alright guys, today I'm going to bring you a quick video on basically how to uh, dual boot Windows 7 and uh, Arch Linux. I'm going to use Arch Bang, mainly just because it's easier to use for video purposes. And uh, this is inside of a Windows... Uh, virtual machine I booted up onto a Archbang which is, this is the previous Archbang release this is not the 2000 it was like the April 2012 release it's 2011 the last 2011 release but just go into the installer do your time and yeah sure it's 10 o'clock uh, more like 318 and then when you get to hard disks, you are going to need to go here. And then also I need to mention this now that I'm in here. In this screen, these two files are your normal two NTFS files that are create or partitions that are created when you make a Windows 7. Um, computer like on any on a normal install with a hard drive you're gonna get a boot which is system reserved which I believe you can't modify and then you get your primary which is your C drive if um, and then you're gonna need free space if you don't have free space I will make a separate video for that which is basically you're gonna go into your disk manager and you're just going to right click it and say I want this much space taken out of the C drive and it makes it free space which it's not it's on uh, formatted but since I have the free space I have 27 about like I think that's about 25 gig, gigs of uh, RAM right there so I'm gonna go new I'm gonna go primary and this is I'm going to hit delete. Don't hit delete when you're here. You just start typing. Um, this first one is going to be your boot partition. I'm just going to do 100, and it's in megabytes, so 100. And then you do beginning. And then it's going to say bootable, and then that's going to pop up right there next to it. And if you notice also, it says Linux right here. So you have boot and Linux. And then you're going to go down to free space again. And go new, logical. And this is going to be your swap. And I usually do 1 gig per gig of RAM. This virtual machine currently has 2 gigs of RAM. So I'll just do, I'll do 2 gigs also. So 2048 megabytes is 2 gigs. And that needs to be at the end. If you don't do it at the end, it's going to say, oh, I didn't do it that time. Usually it says uh, unusable. So let me just redo that just so it doesn't mess up at all. But it... All right, now that I have that free space in there, I'm going to do my root and my home partitions. So my root, I'm going to make... 10 gigs, so 10. Let's just do 10,000. That's rough enough in the beginning, and then do another one just to the remaining. That's gonna be my home. And then bef you don't want to go to quit, you gotta use left and right arrows here and go over to right. And you have to actually have to do type in yes, can't just do Y. And yeah, it's confused about two being bootable. And then you just do quit, and then you go down to done. And now, oh, I should have mentioned also, you need to write these down. So actually here, I'm going to go to cancel, just to make sure I have all these right. So you're going to go back into partition, say yes. Click on that first dev SATA. And let's see, I have these written down from doing it yesterday in my actual tower. You got your SDA3 is your boot, and you're going to want to write that down. 
DS5, which was my root, is a 10,000 megabyte. My home partition is the SDA6. And my swap is the SDA7. So I can just go back over to quit because that's already done. Go to done, enter, enter. I think. Now it's going to ask, what one do I want for swap? So I scroll down to SDA7, enter. Format, yes. Now it's asking for my root file, SDA5, enter. And root, I believe it's ext4. That's what I did, it works just fine. Um, what do I want to mount at boot up? Well, I want to mount uh, SDA3. And I do, I believe it's that one. And that's going to be called boot. And then SDA6 is going to be home. That's another ext4. And rename it home. Enter. And then go down to done. Don't mess with these two. They're the Windows ones. And you just say yes. It's going to sit and do that. So this usually should this shouldn't take too long usually. Yep, it's done already. And then I'm gonna go to install. Now in, this, in the in the installer it basically just tells you straight up it this bar down here is gonna fill. You click enter, then there's gonna be two bars, and you just click enter again. Uh and then it's gonna say the packets, or I believe packets, uh, it's either packets or blocks, uh, were installed correctly. You just click enter again. Like it's not going to tell you to do anything, but you need to just click enter again. Which I am going to cut this part out just because it does take about five minutes. Uh, it is faster off of a CD, I've noticed. Doing this through a ISO image, this will take a good like 15 minutes. I'm not really sure why actually. But I'm going to pause the video right now. Oop, I did not mean to do that. And... Alright. Welcome back. And this is a screen I was talking about that... Um, let me go full screen. Uh, scroll. This is screen segment where it doesn't really say anything to do, but the screen before it said hit enter again, so I just hit enter again, do it complete, configure system, do a password, username, This is making my user, and now it's done. You can go down to config system. It says optional, but you need to do this. If you want to change the name of your system, you need to go here and change it from Archbang. I'll leave it there just because I don't care. But then you also need to go into hosts here, and you have to change the name here on these local hosts right here. So whatever you change it, like... And then, uh... Here, that, that was my dad. Uh... And you need to go down here... To mirror list. And you need to comment, or uncomment, or no, you have to comment. Each one of these to whatever country you are. I don't care because I'm not going to be updating. This is for updating purposes and downloading new things like this only comes with Archbang comes with this version of Archbang comes with Aurora. If you want Firefox, you do it through. You need to update these. 
so they work correctly. I don't really care, but also if you don't know to exit this, you click Control X and then Y for yes, and then you say Enter to overwrite that file. But then the real part to make this actually dual boot is you go back to main menu. This is gonna run some stuff. Sometimes this goes like instantly, other times it actually has to go through it like this. And it should only take another second here. I think USB might be the last one if I remember right. Nope. It's generating. Come on. Okay. Now you're going to go install bootloader. You're going to say grub. Don't do none. Do grub. And it's going to generate. And say okay. Now you're going to want to scroll all the way down. And you need to delete the number signs or comments from these bottom four. And then the title, you're going to want to change this to uh, Windows. Seven. And then you can go Control X to exit. Y for yes. Enter. And you can say OK. And then you're gonna t pick the Dev SATA. It's the very first one, and that's the hard drive that our operating systems are installed on. And you just say OK. You need to quit, and that's gonna close. And then we're gonna go to exit. And restart. And the shell is going to get killed and everything. Reboot. Oh, and I forgot to take the CD up. Alright. And remove disk. Force amount. And reset machine. Remove. Pop the CD out or remove the disk. By default, I forgot to show you also in the in the grub file, it'll give you five seconds on this screen and it'll auto boot into Arch, or I can boot in Windows. Actually, I'm going to show you how to do that's because I re just reset it before. <laughs> that screen normally won't come up. I'm going to boot in Windows here, and I will show you at the end of this video here, or in the next part, how to. Uh, get that free space and I'll put an annotation to this end part then so people if they don't know they'll come right to it but that is about it just want to say thank you guys for watching